Rabiz, thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to have you here with us, sharing with our audience your vision, who is Ramiz. Um, so that would be actually my first question. Well, who is Ramiz? Mark, first, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm an immigrant kid. I came to the States when I was three years old from Egypt. My career has spanned multiple things. I worked in software at Microsoft. I write science fiction novels. Uh, and now my focus is really on climate and clean energy. Good. Uh, so actually, I was born in Congo. Okay. Yeah, so, so that helps to get this global perspective on, yeah. on humanity. Um, so, clean energy revolution. Yes. This is what you'll share with our audience. So, can you help us to understand what's really behind these three words? Well, what's really behind the clean energy revolution is economics. We've had an assumption for decades that we had to do something about climate change, but we thought that uh, clean energy, clean mobility, clean industry would be more expensive and would uh, we'd have to suffer, we'd have to give up things for climate, uh, but that's no longer the case. What's happened is that now it's clear that around the world clean energy, clean electricity, or clean electric mobility, and eventually clean industry will all be cheaper than doing those things with fossil fuels. And so not only is it good for the planet and good for humanity, it's good for business uh, to, to switch. Yeah, so from a CFO investor perspective, this is something to really care about. Many of our clients are energy companies. Yes. So what's really rooted in your message is disruption, massive disruption. That's right. So disruption of energy, uh, how, how do you foresee that? Well, what's happening is that the cost of things like solar power, uh, battery energy storage, wind power, offshore wind, are all just in free fall. And they're all falling tremendously faster than the forecasters have, have ever predicted. I'm a forecaster myself, and I was called a crazy optimist. In 2011, I said by 2015, we'd have solar as cheap as coal in some parts of the world. And everyone, energy industry, people in solar, environmentalists told me I was crazy. And I was wrong because it actually happened faster than expected. Wow. And so now, in the sunny parts of the world, solar is often a third the price of fossil fuel electricity generation. Wind is sometimes half the price. Storage is cheap. And these trends show no sign of stopping. Okay. So we're headed for a point where, and in some places we see this point happening now, it's cheaper to build new solar or wind storage than to keep an existing coal plant running or even to keep an existing natural gas plant running. And that is a tipping point where just the economics, independent of policy, will drive massive disruption of existing industry. So the, the exponential curve is happening before than even uh, expected by the crazy optimists. That's right, yeah. So your message to the CEO of an energy company would be? Well, my, my message is, are you, I talk to oil and gas companies, for instance, are you an oil and gas company or are you an energy company? Uh, are you a coal generation company or are you an energy company? Okay. Because the world is always going to need more energy. Energy demand is going to keep growing globally, especially in emerging markets. It just might not be in the form yep. uh, that we've been producing it thus far. Three things are happening in the automotive industry at the same time. Um, one is electrification, and just like solar, people thought it would never be able to compete. People thought electric vehicles would never be able to compete. But now on a you know, cost per mile basis, they're probably competitive. And in the next, let's say, five years, for a purchase price, it'll be cheaper to buy an electric vehicle with a 200, 300 mile range than an equivalent auto, uh, internal combustion gasoline vehicle. That's a huge inflection point. Second, the shift to Mobility as a service, transport as a service uh, is massive. Access uh, is more important to consumers than ownership, especially for younger people, but especially also true in cities. And three, the rise of autonomy. And autonomous vehicles are still controversial when they'll arrive, but they will arrive this decade and probably in the first half of this coming decade. And when you put those together, you're talking about it being tremendously cheaper maybe 10 cents a mile, 20 cents a mile, to get into an autonomous electric vehicle that you summon than to operate a vehicle that you own. And so that means a tipping point. It means that we may have already hit the peak 
of gasoline engine vehicle sales. It's possible. It might have happened in 2017, 2018. Uh, maybe it'll really happen in 2021, 2022, but not beyond that. It means that uh, auto manufacturing is no longer the king of the auto industry. And operating these fleets is probably the most vital thing. It's a huge challenge to luxury brands as well, because you don't care about the brand when you get into an Uber or a Lyft. You mm -hmm. care about, you know, is it clean and the experience. So there's a massive shift in what the, the automotive industry actually is. Um, and, and then we have people. Yes. So um, actually, many of these conversations are around this idea how uh, exponential technologies, new technologies, disruptive technologies are moving humanity from scarcity to abundance. Um, so for human beings, like the, the last mile of all these changes, uh, how do you foresee the, the, the future of uh, people in this clean energy revolution new scheme? Yeah, I, I think overall, people want the lights to just come on when they yep. turn them on. People want to have a cheap way to get from point A to point B, and they care a little bit less about how that's provided. Okay. But what do they care about? They care about, uh, do they have that at all? And so we have the age of abundance here. This event is about scarcity to abundance. But we have 1.3 billion people in the developing world without electricity at all. We have billions that don't have uh, automotive solutions. So for them, it's going to be a dramatic change because the people without electricity live in the sunniest parts of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, two, I think you have in China, in India, in Southeast Asia, this incredibly polluted air. We hear from the World Health Organization, eight million people a year die from air pollution. So that's a massive quality of life change if the air above your city is clean. And three, for everyone, lowering the cost of energy, lowering the cost of transportation, which is what these technologies can do, is just an engine of economic growth, it's an engine of prosperity, and that's a, a great story for all of humanity. So I, I like to call myself a disruption holic, so I probably <laughs> would easily agree on that. Uh, you're involved in, in many, many uh, different uh, journeys, endeavors, initiatives. Uh, can you share with us your craziest project? <laughs> My craziest is uh, uh, something I can't share. Unfortunately, it's wow. still in stealth mode. Uh, but what I'll say about it is that it could completely change the economics of wind power. Uh, I, I can't say how, but we have something that is uh, massively disruptive. Uh, another craziest one is energy storage that could totally change the economics of energy storage for 12 hours. You could have solar during the day and store 12 hours of it at night very, very cheaply. So those are the sorts of things that go even beyond the, the price curves that we see right now and could bend them uh, even faster. Okay. Wow, I was expecting you to say you are joining the Kardashian show. That's, <laughs> that's, that's even better. Uh, Ramiz, look at this world. So I have three kids, I look at the world, huge concerns. Yes. When you look at this world, what's your like top one biggest concern? In climate change is certainly one of the very biggest concerns that we have right now uh, because it hits everything. It hits food, it hits water, it hits cities with rising sea levels, it hits uh, these massive forest fires we've had in California and the air that we breathe, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I do think we can turn the corner on it, and I do think that is in uh, humanity's interest, it's in people's interest, and I think now it's in business's interest as well. Okay, so I feel some optimism, optimism behind that. Cautious optimism. Cautious it's, optimism. It's still going to get worse, we're still not going fast enough, but I do think at the end of this century, the average person on Earth is going to be better off than they are today. Last question to, to close this um, amazing conversation. Uh, I will just play this silly game. Imagine uh, like this is a magic wand. I give it to you, you take it. Uh, so now you have, Ramiz has a superpower. This is your new superpower. You can change anything in this world. Anything, really anything you want. But just one thing. What would you change? The thing I change sounds quite minor, but I would change the minds of people that make decisions 
so that they saw and understood the pace of change in clean energy and clean mobility and could make those decisions based on that now. So again, it's on people, yeah. So it's on, always on people. Good. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure. Thank you, Mark. A pleasure for me as well. I think our audience, audience will love your statement. Uh, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.